twice, I hear you. Okay, let's get into it. EQ. So for those who are just getting into music or maybe you do something with audio already, but you're getting into the studio side of music, understanding and knowing what an EQ is is really going to set you apart from the other mixing and mastering engineers. And it's an essential tool we as engineers use to help us manipulate and move frequencies. So let's dive in. I'm going to pull up some EQs here. And as you can see, as I'm pulling them up, these EQs, they all come in different shapes and sizes. I know what you're thinking. They look kind of intimidating and scary. There's knobs and there's sliders and numbers everywhere. But rest assured, after you watch this tutorial, I promise you're going to know how to use an equalizer. Now, whether they all look the same or different, they all do the same things. And we can kind of see they all kind of look the same as, you know, they all have some type of knob or slider and numbers everywhere. Let's get down to the brass of what an EQ is. I'm going to use this EQ and I'm going to use mostly this EQ. So now finding the right EQ for you is just a matter of just playing with EQs, doing some YouTube video research and Googling EQs until you find the right one. Now me personally, I like the fab filter. We're going to use the fab filter and we're going to use a little bit of the Pro Tools stock EQ just because you may not have like a aftermarket EQ like I do. But Pro Tools comes with this EQ and even though it's not as visual and you don't get to see all the frequencies, it does the same thing. So understanding and knowing how to use it is going to help you, whether you can see representations or not. As we can see, this EQ, this has seven, seven different knobs and squares and boxes that you can manipulate. We'll get into the bands and EQ, different EQ bands later. But for right now, let's take a look at these numbers, right? As we can see from this EQ and this EQ, they both have kind of the same number of structure and name, same number concept going. You know, this one's on the right and this one's on the left. These numbers at the bottom right here, right, right here, right here, right here, these are your frequency spectrums, your frequency bands. And as we can see, it goes from about 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. There's different bands and there's different regions of the EQ that we, that we target and we talk about. We have our highs, our mids, and our lows. Now, I have some samples here on the playlist that we're gonna listen to and use an EQ and it's gonna give you an idea what frequencies correlate. So what sounds go with what frequency. So my first sound that I'm gonna play for you, as we all know, these, these samples and sounds I have are everything that makes up a beat or instrumental. So the first sound we're gonna play is gonna be a hi-hat. So I'm gonna play my hi-hat. And as we can see as the hi-hat plays, it hits between the 5K and 20K regions or 5 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz region. So it covers this frequency spectrum right here. The next sample I have here, as we all know, is the clap. And we can see our clap is not as sharp as the 20K, but it's definitely next to it. And it hits between about the 10K till about the 1K region. So now I'm going to go ahead and play for you, as we all know, the kick drum. So we can see the kick drum, it hits over here near the 200 to 50 Hertz region. It's not over here anymore. Now it's down here. Last sample I'm gonna play for you, as everyone knows, this is the beloved, and behold, 808. Now when we play the 808, we can see the 808, the major and biggest part of the 808 hits at about the 100, all the way down to the zero hertz region. So now we can see how we went all the way up and all the way down, and now you should have a good idea of where, what sounds and what frequencies correlate. So as we can see in our highs, our highs are always gonna be our sharp S. Sounds are always gonna be up in this high region area. Then like mids, that's gonna be more like the clap and the snap and the snare. It's gonna be over here in our mids. And then our thumpier, boomier sounds, it's always gonna be in our lows. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play everything together for you and we're gonna look at the whole beat playing together on the EQ here so you can get a better representation. And as we can see, we can see our hi-hats, we can see our clap, and we can see our 808. So now we have a good representation of what an EQ does. Let's get into EQ frequency manipulation and tweaking frequencies around. So now if you notice on most of the EQs here, not that one, but this one, okay? I know what you're thinking, this one, and you're like, oh, this EQ doesn't have any bands. But why I like this EQ is you can go ahead and click and you can make as many bands as you want. Now going back to bands. So now you're gonna see EQ seven band. So what this means is it basically has seven bands that you can go in and manipulate. If you need to turn something up or turn a frequency down, you can go ahead and do all that. Now, as we can see, each box has the same knobs and same setup. Even this, when I click a band, it has the same three knobs. You see these three knobs? 
So now our Q knob, our Q knob is important because our Q knob is what is gonna allow us to manipulate the frequency range. Our Q region, skinny to fat. So how many frequency ranges you wanna cover during manipulation. And our gain is our volume. So if I go up, this is turning that frequency up and this is turning the frequency down. And then we have the frequency knob. So this is if you, if you know you have a sound, a sharp sound somewhere, maybe coming from the hi-hats or cymbals or vocals, you know it's gonna be in this region. So you can just throw, you know, throw a band open, open a band, and we know it's gonna be in this region, but if we wanna target specific frequencies, specific frequencies, we can do that just real slow. So let's say I have something at the 5K region that I wanna sl slim down because it's kind of annoying. So how I would do that is I would manipulate it. I would come over with my frequency, put it about the 5K region, and I only wanna cover from about to the 3K to 10K. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna slim down 3K to 10K. And it needs to come down, probably about six decibels, whatever decibels you need to come down until you use your ears and figure out. And that's basically how the knobs work on an EQ. So it's nothing too special. Now you got an understanding of the three knobs. We're gonna get into another technique that most EQs will have, and that's called high pass and low pass. So why low pass and high pass filters are important is because they kind of help us roll and shape. And rolling off just basically means we need to cut out frequencies that we don't want and that are unwanted. So in your low region here, you're gonna have a lot of bass and boominess, and you're gonna get a lot of bass from your vocals and your kick drum. So a common technique we do with vocals or even beats is we roll off a little bit of low. And what that does is it kind of opens up this frequency so that you don't have too many bass frequencies clashing. And the same thing with the hot. Okay, the highs are kind of the same way. If you have something a little too sharp on that, that are just a little too sharp, you need to just kind of roll it off and we can kind of do that. So another practical application we use with high pass and low pass is actually how we get those ad lib or telephonic vocals or ad libs in vocals. So I'm gonna play my vocal sample here. And as we can tell, it's just a regular. But let's say I want it like telephonic or ad lib. So how would I go about doing that? So. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna roll off our frequency till about, about the 20 hertz region or three, 300 hertz. And we're gonna make it a little sharp. And same thing with this. We're gonna make this a little sharp and we're gonna roll off some highs. So now when I play it. Birkin bag and hundred dollar bills, it's so exhausting, yeah. Making. And that's basically how they make and how you get an ad lib track using your equalizer. Now, depending on the track and the song, you know, the ad-libs may be a little more open or they, they may be a little more closed. But that's basically your ad-lib track. So a lot of us engineers, we do a lot of mixing and mastering. Maybe from other studios, maybe from artists. And a lot of the times when you get a song to master from an artist, he's not going to have the instrumental or beat track outs. A lot of times, you know, as we know in today's music, a lot of artists, they use beats off of YouTube or it's really just going to be one track. You're not going to have each individual track. So let's say this track is an MP3 track. It's just one track and it only has, it has the whole drum track on it and one track. And I'm doing some vocals and that hi-hats are just a little too loud and I don't have the hi-hat. Sure, we could sort of ask the producer if he can go in and turn his hi-hats down, but that's not necessary if you know how to use an EQ. So I'm gonna play it here and as we can see, let's say I wanna turn down these hi-hats. So how would I do that? So I'm gonna find, we can see from our visual representation and we know from our previous lesson that the hi-hats are gonna hit in this five to 20K region. So now what I can do is I can come right here and I just want to tame some of those hi-hats down for whatever reason. So I'm going to come over here. I don't want to take out too many frequencies. You just want to kind of target the hi-hat frequency. And we can see when we turn it up and when we turn it down. Almost gets rid of it completely. So maybe now the hi-hats, and I want them right there. So that's perfect, I kinda tamed the hi-hats. And now let's say the bass is too boomy. So we'll take some of that boom out. And what we can do is just kind of scrape a little bass. So another application we use, and what you're probably here for, is vocals. So right down here I have a vocal sample, and we're gonna kinda listen to it, and I'm gonna show you kinda how to EQ vocals. For those that don't know how to get to the plugins in EQ, you're just gonna go ahead and click one of these boxes, plugins, 
EQ on our vocal track. The goal with EQing a vocal track, you just want to shine it so that it sounds nat more natural and it sounds as if the person's right next to you talking. That's the best way I can describe it. We're trying to get it to that. Because when you record a vocal take, it's gonna usually sound with no effects on it, it's usually gonna sound pretty boxy. It's gonna sound something like, Birkin bag and hundred dollar bills, it's so exhausting, yeah. Right? So it's gonna sound real boxy and it's gonna need some cleaning up. So how do we clean up? For starters, for a lot of us that don't really know where to start and clean up a vocal, I'm gonna put you on game a little bit here, okay? And most plugins that you're gonna use in almost every plugin, whether it comes with the program or you buy it, they're all gonna have presets. And presets are a good thing because presets give us a starting point. So for this, you know, I'm gonna go male vo vocals. And you know, even on this one, we're gonna go dynamic vocals and we'll go vocal two. Now, as we can see, we kind of see the different EQs in our in our presets. We can kind of see they, they kind of gave us kind of the same starting point. So that pretty much means, and what that indicates is vocals are basically gonna kind of be EQ'd in the same manner. Now there's other advanced techniques we use for vocals with EQs, but we're just gonna kind of stick to the basics today. As we can see here, this is a good start and a preset. So as we look at this EQ, we can see that there's a lot of bass roll off. So some of the bass got rolled off because like I said, you know, you, you don't want a lot of bass in the vocals. Your beat and your instrument is gonna have 808s and kicks and bass in it. So we wanna just kinda make the vocals kinda go up as we call the middle. We want it to sound like it's in the middle of the beat. And how we do that is we shape the frequencies that make up the vocals. So I'm, I'm gonna default this and I'm gonna play the vocal track and we're gonna kinda get an idea of where the vocal track is on the frequency spectrums and the EQ. Birkin bag so that's not too bad as we can see there's actually not too much bass in this vocal but it does have a lot of what we call mid low or low mid so right where the lows meet the mids kind of has quite a bit this is kind of going to give us a little bit of muddiness that we we want to kind of get out and we want to push the frequencies into the middle of our beat how we do that is we can go back to our preset and we can go to our vocals. I like to go through dynamic vocals and I usually use, use two or three. It's a good starting point. So now I'm gonna play it with the EQ and, and the plugins on. We can see. Birkin bag and hundred dollar bills, it's so exhausting. That doesn't sound too bad and it cleaned it up quite a bit. EQing vocals is really about personal preference and what you think sounds good and clean. Now, in my personal opinion, I think that sounds a little bassier and I think a little more bass could come off. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll off a little more bass. Birkin bag and now the mids are pretty mid, but I think with his vocals, cause he's kinda has a low voice, low male voice, we're just gonna push these up just a little bit more. Birkin bag and hundred dollar bills, it's so exhausting, yeah. Making millions, never asking how you're feeling. And that sounds pretty good to me. So now when I put that on the instrument, it's gonna sound, it's gonna sound right up the middle, you know? We can already tell that it's not gonna have a lot of bass because we rolled off about 40, 45 hertz in bass. And now we just have a nice tame vocal. Birkin bag and huh? So now with that being said, you should have a pretty good understanding and farewell understanding of EQ and equalizer and how an equalizer works. If you feel like I missed anything or I was wrong about something or you have any suggestions or something that I didn't go over on, on it, leave it in the comments. Like I said, this is more just a basic on it. I'll probably gonna do another advanced EQing techniques and advanced EQing. So I didn't wanna get into too much. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button.